Hello, my name is Lee Sass, and welcome to my latest in the Skyrim Let's Play series. A new character! Say hello to Belweneth. Belweneth is a... is a Bosma, and she's been living in, in Windhelm for some time. And when I say living in Windhelm, she's on the streets of Windhelm. Little is nothing is known about her, her upbringing. Well, not her upbringing, but how she arrived in Windhelm. She has no parents. She's an orphan. No one seems to be aware of how she got there. She's been there from a very young age, living as best she can on the streets. Now, in case you're not aware, Windhelm is not the friendliest place in the world. It's the centre of uh, the Stormcloak uprising, and in general. In the majority, the people of Windhelm are not welcoming to those of other races or other provinces. Uh, there is a, a reasonable community of Dunma in, in Windhelm, and some Argonians as well, both of which are very much second-class citizens. The Argonians work in the docks and keep much to themselves, and the Dunma, well, there's a, there's a couple of merchants, but otherwise they mostly live over in the Grey Quarter and uh, suffer a lot of problems with the uh, with the locals and how they're treated. Uh, but what else is in none of those groups. In fact, wood elves in general are, are very rare in Skyrim. There's very few. And certainly there's none other that I'm aware of in in uh, in Windhelm. As such, she is even more isolated. She uh, doesn't fit into the community of the Argonians, so it doesn't fit in the community of the Argonians, but it doesn't, doesn't fit in with the Dunma, and uh, has suffered from the same problems as the uh, from the locals as the Dunma do, but without the support behind them of having other people of your own type around, and uh, she hasn't got the most sparkling personality in the world either, so she is isolated, she is she's very much alone in the world. She um, <coughs> excuse me, she survives mostly by by stealing, but she's only a part of the Thieves' Guild and does the best she can, and does pretty well for herself, having grown from a young lady, uh, or a child, to a young lady. But she's trapped. There's n there's no way on from here. She can't seem to, to move out of where she is, so she's just stuck on the streets, living as she can. But she has a plan. And it's pretty easy to guess what that plan is from the title of this Let's Play. But the the town is rife with rumours about the Aretino boy, and he's trying to to raise the the uh, the Dark Brotherhood to deal with the uh, well. I won't go into it too much in case you haven't seen the story, but he's trying to raise the Dark Brotherhood, the assassins. And but one of this plan, as mad as this is, she is going to her plan is to, is to see the boy, to find out who he's trying to get rid of, and to to do the job for the assassins, essentially. The plan behind this being, you know, if you want power in the world, if you want control, if you want to feel safe, well, what do you do? Who who can you think of? Who 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 can someone in her position become that that feels secure and, and earns the respect of people whether they want to give it to you or not? Well that would be an assassin. And she's hoping to to, to get into the into the Dark Brotherhood in in that way, which is of course a frankly ridiculous idea. It's a it's a stupid plan. But then again, desperate measures. Um, so there's more to it than that. I've got other plans about how how she thinks and how she'll be. But that is essentially the sketchy plan for now. And I've never done, I've never completed or even barely started the Dark Brotherhood uh, quest in in Skyrim. I just realised recently that I haven't done a lot of the side, the sort of majorish side quests that there are. I've never completed them. Some of them have started them, some of them simply haven't completed them. However, my, one of my reasons behind this, to make it deeper than this, was for my experience with Oblivion. So in Oblivion, uh, I have completed the Dark Brotherhood quests in that, and uh, what struck me was that the, the assassins in, in the Dark Brotherhood in the Oblivion game were, were not really the the killing machines that you might think of. They're not the black clad ninjas that are slicing people up in direct combat. Most of the quests that are involved 
in in Oblivion are not involving dark conf direct confrontation. They are about sneaking around. They are about killing through stealth. They are about killing without anyone knowing until it's too late to what's happened. Accidents and poisonings and other things, which is which makes perfect sense. The, the secret of killing, you know, the, despite the fact of what some of the characters are like, it is not I say it's not ninja disaster <laughs> slicing people up as uh, sword in the dark and all the rest of it. Um, so my my what occurred to me was maybe Skyrim's similar. So, Beweleth, living as she has on the street, is a very slight lady. She's not had the best nutrition in the world growing up. And she's hardly going to be matched in combat by taking on an experienced fighter, or even maybe an average fighter. So, although I want her to join the Dark Brotherhood, she will not be an armoured character. Um, she will be running around slicing people up with swords or anything like that. She will do the, the utmost to avoid those things and do it far more through brains and guile and whatever else. Now, it may be that this is this is a fruitless task and I won't be able to do this. This is just not possible because of how the quests are designed. I don't know. And if you're aware of whether this this is a, I, this is an impossible task I've set myself or not, then please, don't tell me. Because seeing me fail and trying to do this is, is half the fun. And I don't mind that. If it, see, if it turns out that I'm going to have to do things differently, then I will change things and I will change the story and change her or do something to to, to work around this. But that's my plan. I don't want a, uh, a killing machine here. At least not a killing machine in that way. So I want to see how this works. And I say that all of this is pretty much blind beyond the first part of the Dark Brotherhood quest. And we'll see what else other facets Bill Willis has that uh, will also um, come into play. So let's just name her. As before, I've used uh, a name generator to get this. Also, she has only a single name as well, because she knows nothing about her family. But there we go. So, second chance as before, as I did with Stryko. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do next, actually. Um, Approach, my child, and choose where your new life shall begin. So... Let me see. Where can I? Hmm. I might have to. Might have to finagle this by because I don't want to arriving by ship, but I might have to. Because I don't think most of these are appropriate. Yeah, I might have to put her. I don't want to give her a property. She has got nothing, no, nothing to own. I might have to do the same as start start with Stryko. and I'll bring us in at another point in Which town. Which city did you sail to? Yeah, that looks to be the only option, I think. So we're going to Windhelm. A life filled with opportunity awaits you, traveller. Okay, so there we go. So I will go, I'm going to send her over to Windhelm now. And I hope you like the introduction to her. I did try quite hard to work on her face to, to get her in the right way. Oh, I should also add something else as well. Something very important. These things run through my head before I start introductions and things. Um, but I should really add it. Obviously, this is a female character, and I'm not a female. So, playing characters of an opposite gender in role-playing games, and I do role-play them. If you haven't seen my previous series, I do tend to roll them. I won't do voices. I'm so not going to do that. I've never done voices before. And I won't do that with a... I wouldn't be doing a lady's voice to do this. There's, there's, there's certain ways of role-playing characters of opposite gender good ways of doing it and bad ways of doing it. And I have a little experience of this, so I'm not going to make any massive faux pas, as far as I'm aware. I will not be um, be doing any parody type characters. I will not be trying to be overly effeminate. I will be me. But, as with all my characters, I will try to style the way that I think and act and speak in the way that I think the character will be. It just happens in this case that the character is female. What do you mean, my follower? That's me, Miko's trying, still trying to follow me. That's a bit strange. Um, so you'll see. I think hopefully you'll see. If you have any concerns about this, oh my God, someone, uh, some another bloke trying to be a female character, some sort of bimbo or goodness knows what else. No, I won't be like that. So please just watch the following episodes and judge for yourselves if you think I'm doing things in the right way. But hopefully, when you watch this other series, the series that I do, you, you'll find that. I think you'll accept more the fact that, yes, it's a female character, 
but obviously I'm not speaking in the female voice, but I'm more importantly um, I'm acting as as the character I'm hungry <laughs> God's sake I'm, <laughs> I'm acting as the character would act rather than and, and you sort of forget about the gender quite so much it isn't such a feature of the uh, of the character anyway um, that's enough for this episode uh, I don't know how people how much people enjoy intros but I think they're important especially when I I want to see what a character is and why they do what they do. I will get on and get on to. Oh, we're going to do a little camera, camera pan. I will get on to uh, the first episode, introduce her as she is in the town, and we'll go on from there. So, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next video.